Okay, here's another new project. Sort of a vintage computer project, that's the way I think about it. And in commemoration for the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, a lot of projects are out there um, related to Apollo hardware, and many of them are for the uh, Disky, which was the display keyboard that the command module and the lunar module had, which was the astronaut's interface with the Apollo guidance computer. And um, that's a whole other project, but there's nothing really to see with that from the outside. It's a bunch of logic, but the Disky is what most people think about and there are a number of implementations out there. The, there's been this open disky project for a long time online uh, with people porting the old uh, MIT or NASA, uh, the various you know agencies that developed the Apollo guidance computer and the disky, porting the original software into more modern formats, uh, making emulators, all sorts of things. And there have also been several efforts to make physical hardware that very closely resembles and uh, behaves like the uh, Disky and Apollo guidance computer. Um, I had contributed to a Kickstarter project and it was for this one here, the Open Disky um, project, and it's uh, on this Instructable or Instructables website. And this sort of documents the two guys who came up with this, uh, their process of designing and testing the hardware. So it kind of goes through here and talks about how they gathered specifications, did research, some text about that, a little bit of history about the AGC and the Disky and various emulation efforts. And it seemed like these guys primarily are not programmers, they're hardware guys and uh, makers in the uh, modern terminology. And they do a lot of 3D printing and circuit boards and all sorts of things. Arduino seems to be one of the most popular ports of the AGC Disky functionality and so they used an Arduino and they started out by prototyping it to get it to drive the displays properly. They came up with their schematics which are downloadable by the way here. They talk about 3D printing the case and they have all the files here that you can download them and print them yourself. They talk about the laser cutting of the keys uh, and engraving. And they uh, describe that and show some pictures. There's some videos. Uh, you can download a PDF of the button caps and also one for the lamp field, which is just the um, overlay which goes over all the lamps and displays. And then they uh, finally show a bill of material, all the things you can buy if you want to do it yourself. And then they talk about, uh, it's kind of out of sequence here, but they talk about how one of the big hurdles was coming up with the special plus minus display that preceded the three main alphanumeric fields and uh, they could not find anything that would do the job so they ended up making their own with a, a circuit board with four LEDs on it and 3D printing a housing that would be of the same size as the seven segment displays. There is a more finished version of it there with surface mount parts. 
so they could get these nice plus minuses at the uh, heads of the columns of text. And then they have their ins assembly instructions here. And um, you can download those assembly instructions for the case, uh, sources of the software, and there's programming information, information on the Adafruit website, uh, various libraries they downloaded and used. And there's a um, description of some of the verb noun lists and program lists. There's the INO file there. Then they talk about the Kickstarter campaign, campaign some more. And it goes on and on and on. Uh, these two guys uh, have this website. S&T Geotronics LLC and they've done several projects uh, an earlier one they did was an Enigma replica which you can take a look at and you can buy a kit and uh, they have some geocaching stuff some smart displays and the other main product is the Apollo Disky Replica. So you can buy four different versions of it assembled and tested. You can buy the circuit board only. You can buy four different versions of kits. So in the assembled version here you can, you know, get the slim version which is just the circuit board and the displays and then you can get it with a case that has enough room in it for all of that plus batteries and speaker and things like that and then there's the big back which adds an additional 3D component to the back to give the disky its actual uh, original physical size and that can come in handy for display purposes although it's a very large and complex 3D printing and they charge quite a lot for it um, so these are their most popular ones but if you go to well let's just do this here so there's uh, the electronics assembled there's the slim kit assembled there's the big back that's nine hundred dollars and then there's the normal disky version in a, I think it may be in a wooden case for display purposes. Uh, that's also $900, so assemble is quite pricey. And if we go back and go to kits, you've got the bare bones kit, which is, um, <clears throat> it looks like it's just the parts, and you'd have to buy the circuit board separately or make your own. There's the complete kit with the big back for $650. There is the kit of circuit board and all electronic components, but it doesn't have the case. And then you've got, you know, the uh, the five hundred dollar kit, which is basically the one I have, and that includes the non-big back version of the case, basically the part that looks gray in that picture. It has that much of the case. It has the circuit board has all the electronic components and the uh, the Arduino is programmed and it also comes with a programmed micro SD card of some sound files that can be used for certain functions of the disky so basically everything you really need so this video is about my experience assembling and doing initial tests of this particular kit right here I did go back later and order the big back for mine and they gave me a, a price because they didn't have a breakout for it by itself so they uh, came up with a price that they thought was reasonable and I paid them for that. So with that in mind, 
let's just go right into the video. Okay, this is the assembly of the open diski. And uh, this is the complete kit. I don't have the parts out here for the case, but these are the uh, assembly instructions and all the electronic parts. I'm going to get the saran wrap off of them here. This is the front of the circuit board. It's a shiny black solder mask with white silk screen. You've got your surface mount LEDs here. These are there's 18 of these and these are what they're calling the Neo pixels and they've been um, already soldered uh, because they're deemed to be too tricky for the average kit builder to put on. And uh, there's also somewhere on here, I think it's on the back, a single 470 ohm resistor that was put on as part of testing these before shipment. Here are, um, I believe these are these are four Maxim chips here, which I believe are LED drivers of some kind. And there are sockets for those. And then there are uh, all the LEDs here. And a read relay and some SIP headers. Male and female. And then stuck on the end here are the uh, plus minus modules, which are custom made using 3D printing because no commercially available unit had the right shape to match the original disky electroluminescent displays. And here are all the electronic parts laid out. There's uh, something with a battery. I'm guessing this might be a real time clock module. Not sure. And there's this device which has a USB plug on it. Otherwise I have no idea what it does. There's a little button on it for reset or something. I'll soon find out what that is. There's another small electronic module here. A little breakout board with some uh, surface mount parts. They look like transistors or something. And then there's this little board here, which I think is an audio player board with a, um, I believe, pre-programmed micro SD card. And then there's this other module here. Skylab. I don't know, what is that? Almost like a GPS receiver. And another little one that may be some sort of a little power supply based on what looks to be an inductor on it and then some illuminated push-button switches and capacitors and lots of resistors and then the aforementioned uh, LEDs and I guess these well it says Maxim and I thought they didn't make microcontrollers but those might be some sort of microcontroller again we'll soon find out and the 470 ohm resistors which I believe are used for the LEDs in the push button switches are all soldered on here. And here are all the 1K resistors which I believe are pull-ups mostly for the switches and there's another three of them there. Some 10K resistors are on the board now and some 100K resistors. Okay, it uh, turns out that this one board here is a um, Arduino Nano uh, computer board. And it goes right here on the board, so I've soldered on some female SIP headers so that it can plug in there, and this is the back of the board. And there is a 4-pin uh, female SIP header, which is for a uh, 5 volt buck converter. It's really one of those uh, Pululu parts. 
and I'm pretty sure that's what this little guy is because it has the little coil on it. Here's the back side of that little buck converter. It can be programmed to be adjustable. You can see the very top position here. Or it can be 12 volts, 9 volts, 5 volts, 3.3, 2.5, or what is that? 1.8 volts. So I need to put a little solder blob on the 5 volts. Very tiny work there. So there are 19 lighted push buttons. And they're just a regular push button switch on the bottom. But they have this lighted part on the top with a LED. And uh, I have to cut the bumps off the bottom here in order to allow it to sit flat on the board. So the first thing I'm doing is using a needle nose pliers to straighten the kinked switch pins so they'll go into the board easier and also solder or um, I can grind them to a flat profile and see what I'm doing a little better when they're straight. Not sure how well it's going to show up in this video but I can put my little uh, grinding wheel on the Dremel here up against the flat sides of the pins on both one side and the other and take them down to the point where the pins are almost a square cross section because they're made out of thin sheet metal so if I take this side off and that side off a little bit then they will go through the holes a lot easier. So at this point I've got all uh, of the switches that's 15, 19 switches and they're just stuck on there it really did help to uh, grind the pins down a little bit they went in much easier and uh, the instructions recommend plugging in the Arduino at this point and powering it and um, it says that it should light up all the LEDs on the board uh, I didn't realize these were all powered by the L uh, Arduino I'm kinda skeptical that that's going to work but maybe it will well, I've got my uh, USB wall wart plugged into my power source and it's plugged in and I do have some activity on here there's LEDs that I can't read the legends for but it's obviously getting power but something that is not happening here is any illumination of the LEDs Okay, well I got an email from the makers of this kit and they said that besides the Arduino the only other thing that needs to be on this uh, board at this time for the LED test to work is the real time clock, the RTC and the module as it comes has a 90 degree angle bend in its header which isn't ideal and he just says you're going to have to put a header on the other end for the power and then bend those ones straight so that it can mount like that. But I wanted all my modules to be plug inable and uh, I don't have any more headers because not enough female headers were shipped. I've ordered some on DigiKey. I may also get uh, another one from the maker of the kit. I don't know when to expect that if, if I'll ever get it. So I have to wait a couple of days to progress with this kit. Um, I also ordered some better quality sockets. Um, so there's that as well, but I'm going to have to put this project aside until I get those parts from DigiKey. Okay, my DigiKey order came in. I've got here some of the better quality IC sockets, a few more than I need. They don't cost that much, and if I'm going to order a few and pay postage, I might as well get a few more, restock the parts bin, and um, let's see, did I already show the label for that? Maybe I should... Maybe I should show it again here. And then <clears throat> and then here's the part for the female single row headers. Right there. Okay, here's the new one with a remnant of the old one on the right. I tried to get one that ones that were the same height, same pin into the PC board. 
and I'm sure that I'll find out that they're the same width as I specified them. Yep. So as long as the pins plug into them the same way, I should be good. And there we go, those plug in just fine. So that's a part to remember in the future if I need more of those. The way that these uh, longer strips are cut down is you grab a pin with a pliers and just pull it out the bottom. That's the way they're inserted at the factory. They look like little tuning forks. And um, then you just use, well what you've got here at this point is an empty channel that's unoccupied by a pin and you cut the uh, plastic at that point with a side cutter or a set of snips much like this. I'm gonna make it go all over the place if I'm not careful. Yep, it shot all over but I knew that was gonna happen. And then you're uh, left with try to get a focus on it, this slightly gnarly bit at the end that you can leave alone. Um, or what I usually do is I get my safety razor and just trim downwards at the end there to even out the end a little bit, make it look more cosmetic. Okay, I've got the um, real-time clock module installed and uh, the circuit board isn't laid out quite right. I don't know if uh, they changed suppliers of these things midstream or if they just got the dimensions wrong from the get-go, but you can see here that the spacing is not quite right, so the headers have to angle outwards slightly. I hope that I'm still able to plug in and unplug it. Oops, I didn't solder the top of that one. Okay. Okay, I can unplug it. Let's see if I can plug it back in. Yes, so that's good. Okay, so now I've got the Arduino plugged in and the real time clock, and according to the maker, at this point, I should be able to plug this guy in and get some lights to light up. Ah, look at that. It's a thing of beauty. Now, not all of them are lit up, but all the ones on the left are. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I've got this turned around funny here. Yeah, that's supposed to light up the keyboard switches, and it does, so I've made sure they're all in there correct, and now I can go ahead and solder all of them in, all six pins per switch. Now to turn on the LEDs, the rest of the LEDs, the ones that are called the NEOs, I'm supposed to have to key in verb 35 and enter. Now, um, I don't know if these switches are making good enough contact, but they probably are. So this will be the verb key. 35 would be this guy and this guy. And enter would be this guy. So, let's see. Ugh. Verb. 35. Enter. Okay, that did not make them light up. Nope, that's not cutting it. Uh, it may just be that the switches aren't all making good enough contact. The, the main reason to do this test is not to test these LEDs, which were tested at the factory, but to test um, that all the switches are in the right position and in the right orientation. So I can go ahead and solder those now. Okay, now with the switches soldered in, I still haven't soldered the LED pins because I was in a hurry. But uh, I'm going to try the Verb 35 
enter again. Uh, so these are powered up. I'm going to go verb, and it gives me a prompt. I go 35, enter, and they all turn on, just like they're supposed to. And then they turn off after a short time delay. So I'm going to do that again. Verb, 35, enter. Excellent. Everything's working so far. So now I've got the four 24-pin sockets for the Maxim ICs that drive the LED displays. Now this is the IMU module and it requires a jumper to be placed besides soldering the header in it requires a jumper to be placed between VCC and the ADO pin which I've done with a piece of wire wrap wire. And there's the uh, female header soldered on the IMU position and now the IMU plugged in. And then the uh, line leveler which has just got uh, a few surface mount parts on it. Uh, most of them look like transistors but there's one that appears to be an IC and uh, that is similarly connected in an unpluggable manner to the main circuit board. And the next thing soldered to the board are 10 tantalum capacitors and a read relay right next to the Arduino and the uh, power input terminal block and now 21 of the seven segment LED displays have been soldered in decimal points to the lower right. There are still three positions here that although they're marked as seven segment displays and that did confuse me I didn't uh, the instructions don't actually mention it they just ins say install the LED displays and I just started at the upper right and started working down and I actually had a couple of these positions with the uh, ICs or the uh, LED displays already installed but I was only putting in diagonal pins to, so I could make sure they were all aligned and flat on the board before I soldered the rest of the pins and that's a good thing because it turned out these three positions are not supposed to have the seven segment uh, digits installed those are for the special custom made plus minus displays so it was easy to uh, desolder the couple of pins on each of those two pull them out and then put them where they needed to be but if anybody else is doing this that's a gotcha it would really really be good if the instructions would say hey you know make sure you don't install anything in these positions during this step or to change the silk screen to show the plus and minus or something the uh, disky the original disky uh, had a special digit in the leftmost position of these three rows that could display either plus or minus something that the regular seven segments can't do they can display minus but they can't display plus there's just no combination of segments that'll do it so the designers of this kit had to create their own that was a size compatible and basically it's a small circuit board um, with some surface mount LEDs in those four positions and then the case is uh, 3D printed and even though it doesn't say anything about it in the instruction manual I have an email from the kit designers saying that the text on the back of the circuit board should be uh, in the same orientation as text on the main circuit board so this side up and also the three pins that are side by side also are on the top side. The bottom one also has three pins but there's an empty space there between um, two of the pins so they need to go like this. Kind of like that. Uh, but that's not going to work. Those have to go over one more hole. It's kind of looking like that's slightly oversized. It might not actually fit the next one in there. 
it may be necessary for me to go and sand off a little bit of the plastic. These are packed extremely tightly together. You can't get them any tighter together and they just barely fit. So, um, you know, the 3D printing isn't as absolutely dimensionally perfect as these, uh, you know, professionally molded mass-produced parts. So there may be something I'll find out. And so now the plus and minuses are soldered in. And the uh, back of the board so far is looking like this. And then the uh, buck converter is plugged in here. There's actually two headers. I'd put in the female header along the side for the adjustable buck converter. And then there's the 5 volt buck converter, which is the Polulu. It's very confusing because the instructions are not clear. Now I emailed the uh, kit designer and said I'd put in the connector for the Pololo, and he said, it's not the Pololo, it's the other set of pins. Well, this set here is clearly marked Pololo, and... this thing out. I don't know if it actually says Pololo on there anywhere. I'm thinking it is this first set of pins on the right here because this one is a oops <laughs> this one is adjustable here with the uh, adjustable voltage. I can't get the camera to focus on it. Uh, anyway, with the solder blob on there to pick one of about eight voltages that it can do. So I'm thinking it should be this set of pins right along the edge of the board instead of the four that are for the Pololo. Up next is soldering in the uh, MP3 player. It's a small um, assembly. as is a slot for a micro SD card which uh, comes pre-programmed with the kit. The kit comes with a tiny dynamic um, speaker, permanent magnet. It's more like a tweeter really. And um, <clears throat> the instructions are pretty vague. It just says solder the speaker to the circuit board without saying how and the wires are not included. Um, the two pins on the MP3 player are marked speaker plus and speaker minus, and I use my continuity checker to trace those to the two holes on the main circuit board called audio out, and there's a round pin and a square pin. The speaker plus terminal on the MP3 player goes to the round pin, and the speaker minus goes to the square pin. So I've wired up my red and black wires uh, with red being plus between the speaker plus and the circuit board round pin which is the plus pin. It probably doesn't matter this would probably sound about the same with the polarity reversed but I might as well get it right. Now the instructions recommend putting some electrical tape on the circuit board here um, because the GPS module goes in right here and you don't want the metal back of it shorting out any of the pins on the uh, component on the other side which is the mp3 player or the back of this IC which is um, one of the um, Maxim LED driver chips but I have a large stock of this uh, mylar and I just cut a piece that will fit in there like that and will be held in by the LEDs on three sides and by the GPS module on the top and it just comes underneath the th uh, the pins, the six pins. This is the only one of these modules I'm not going to be able to put on a on a riser um, female socket like that because it'll sit up too high. It needs to sit flush on the circuit board. So that's on there now. The kit comes with a six position double A uh, battery holder 
which generates 9 volts nominally and that gets wired into the terminal block that we put on in the earlier step and um, the instructions say to connect the power at this point and uh, test the completed electronics assembly. It doesn't say what to expect but presumably it should do something and um, at this point the power should be coming in and getting immediately conditioned by this um, uh, adjustable buck converter down to 5 volts and then everything else runs on the 5 volts so whereas before I powered the assembly off the USB plug through the Arduino in this instance I should be powering it, well I am powering it off the battery through this power supply instead so if everything is good and I make this final connection I should see something happening Well, some stuff lit up. <laughs> what if I push um, verb 35? Okay, that still works. I'm going to do that from a higher angle. Verb. 30 and at 3 appears, 5, 5 appears, enter, and it does a lamp test like it did before. So that seems to suggest that all of these things are lit up, but I didn't pay attention to these, so I'm going to do that again. Ah, yes, the plus and minuses did indeed light up. So that seems to suggest that all that stuff is correctly soldered. It doesn't apparently make any noise at this stage. Well, I was kind of stupid there. I was wondering why it didn't make any noise. I don't have the SD card plugged in. So I think it goes in this way. Let's see. Yes. So now let's uh, go back here and repeat that test. Well, it still didn't do anything, but maybe it's not supposed to. Well, I checked with the maker of the kit, or the designer of the kit, and he sent me a few more things that I can try real quick, so I'm going to reinstate this. And um, <clears throat> verb 16, noun 36 should test the real-time clock. So... Um, Verb, let's see, uh, one, six, and then noun, and it lights up there, thirty six. So verb sixteen, noun thirty six. just to do there. Beats the snot out of me. There's probably something else I'm supposed to push. So I've re-entered verb 16, noun 36. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. So this is monitoring the current time and the procedures used for all commands. So what I was missing before was I uh, had to push enter after each thing I was doing verb and then entered verb and then push the noun button entered the noun and then pushed enter I needed to push verb number number enter noun number number enter and I was missing that extra uh, enter in there. So now it's reading out um, 
the uh, current time as the real time clock thinks it has in there. So I'm, I don't know if that's like 3.55 and 9 seconds or if this is just a count. I'm not sure what those numbers mean. So let's see. Noun 17. Noun uh, 1 7. Enter. Is used to address astronaut attitude. Noun 36 is time of the AGC clock. Noun 43 is lat latitude, longitude, altitude. Noun 68, oops, noun 60, I'm not getting this right here. Let's see. I don't know what those mean. So let's see. Noun. Sixty. Eight. Supposed to be range TTG velocity. Nothing's happening when I do that one. So I've got more feedback here. Let's uh, try this. So um, verb. Sixteen. Enter. Noun. Thirty-six. Oops. Hmm. Okay, I gotta reset. Verb sixteen enter noun thirty six enter is supposed to display the time in twenty four hour format with this being hours fifth uh, minutes and seconds so that's what I thought before. <clears throat> and then, uh, <clears throat> let's see. This is the program key so pro six two enter we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things not because they are easy but because they are hard because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. It's continued to uh, keep time here, although it hasn't been set. Uh, let's see, so Pro 69, enter. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. 
Okay, and Pro Seven Zero. Those are at least three things, at least it verifies that the sound is working. I don't know if there are any other sound files in here, but it looks like this is working well enough that I can proceed with case fabrication. Okay, um, I was able to set the time. I found the uh, code, it was verb 21, noun 36, and then that caused the hours to flash, and this is the plus button and this is the minus button. So I was able to increment and then pushing enter moves to the next field and set the minutes and so on. And pushing enter again then remove, returns it to normal timekeeping mode. Now the real time clock should be um, keeping track of that. So um, that seems to be working. It's pretty late at night. I'm going to get some rest and check it again in the morning when I start working on the case. and. With any luck, uh, it'll have the right time, even though I've powered it down. Okay, it's the next morning. I'm going to check to see if the real time clock worked. So i got to put in verb 16, uh, noun... 36 and it's showing 920 and 52 seconds which exactly matches with the same watch I used to set the clock last night so that's working great okay now for the rest of the assembly which involves the case um, the original disky had quite a large back on it the makers of this kit call it the big back and it's an option I've ordered it but these parts are all 3d printed and they say the big back takes about 60 hours to print um, so the kit just comes nominally or by default with this just simple flat back which comes off with uh, what is it uh, five six seven seven screws and then there's a battery compartment with its own screw on the back of that and that's just molded right in and then there's the front panel let's see which way does this go it goes like this and it's also held on with wood screws although they have um, machined screw type heads on them this one's, I think, just for decoration, or maybe it helps hold a circuit board or something. We'll find out. Then there's also this bezel for the display area. And there's a sheet. It's actually a big sticker, which um, has the text on it for the display area. And... There is a bag of the uh, key tops, and a USB cord, which I haven't used so far, but that's for plugging into the Arduino. And then there is a little hex tool and a bag of additional screws for various things. So that's the um, kit hardware. Now I go to see what's required to um, put all this together. So the first step involves putting all the keys or the key caps into the front panel frame from the back. And again, this is just 3D printed. Um, I think the key caps are probably not 3D printed. I think they're just engraved plastic, but. Um, you kind of get an idea how they go in there. The frame is molded with 
a slight lip right around the bezel edge so the keycaps don't fall all the way through but otherwise they just um, rest in here like this but they won't go all the way through as long as they're kept flat the uh, front panel or bezel has a very tight cutout for these LEDs here and uh, I think the 3D printing process tends to form a very slight lip and it just wouldn't go in there. The instructions suggest sanding it. Instead of doing that I just used a flat file and very carefully just went around and I also squared up the squared up the corners ever so slightly like here and here and now it does Now it does drop in there just fine. So um, I had taken all these uh, push button caps out because they were falling out when I was filing. So now I gotta put those back in. Okay, so the circuit board is held down with six little copper wood screws that go into the 3D printed bezel or frame plus there is one machine screw that goes through and is held down with a small nylon nut so it looks like that So all the buttons seem to work perfectly. They don't have any real slop in them. They fit in pretty firmly. But yet, um, when you push them, they don't go down until you push them harder. And then they have the tactile click. So the spacing on this is all pretty good in that regard. The speaker has a place in the midsection case here, as it's called. And there's a couple of machine screws that will go in there to hold that in. So I've got the uh, speaker mounted in there. I did not use the screws that came with it. Um, these are the screws here that seem to be suggested for the purpose. And they're just not long enough. They barely made it through the speaker mounting bracket and into the uh, 3D printed plastic here. And so they had hardly any holding power and I decided that wasn't adequate so um, I didn't have any longer screws of that type I had some 632 uh, machine screws basically and um, that required tapping the case so I did go so far as to drill through on the bottom and tap the holes for 632 and that worked I also had to drill out the holes in this uh, speaker mounting bracket ever so slightly to allow the 632 to pass through it. Then there's this uh, power switch which um, is supposed to snap into I think this hole here since it has the clearance holes. So now that power switch is in there. I've removed the screw from the battery compartment and now that comes off like that and the uh, battery holder is held into the battery compartment using double-sided foam tape so I should be able to put the lid back on This is all just screwing into plastic, so you have to be careful not to tighten things up too much. Okay, so there's that, and the wires come out a hole on the side. Okay, so that wiring is done. 
I've got the uh, plus wire of the battery going in through the switch and it comes out with a red wire. The black wire from the battery is twisted with that and at about midstream here the uh, black wire from the battery uh, holder is not long enough so I have it spliced with a uh, shrink uh, wrap around it to um, an extension and they both go down here to the power terminal on the circuit board and of course the speaker wiring runs down there and goes in here. I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't make that a plug and the spacing doesn't seem to be oriented to work with a plug um, so it doesn't have a plug. Okay there's this uh, printed overlay I think it's really just uh, paper with an adhesive backing and it's supposed to stick to all these raised areas and uh, to the front of the displays and all that stuff and um, the trick is to turn it on so it lights up most of these displays and then press verb so it lights up that light over here and then peel the backing off and try to line it up as best as possible mostly on the right side <clears throat> one more step I forgot and that's to cover up the GPS with electrical tape and also cover up that middle part so it doesn't show through as gray through the uh, the printed layer okay there's that in the instructions this is supposed to be a piece of frosted uh, otherwise transparent plastic sheet with the laser printing on it in this kit they've uh, substituted a piece of printed regular adhesive back paper which is okay I think it probably offers about the same result as the frosted plastic but there are a couple notable issues um, especially in this right hand area the seven segment displays sit somewhat lower than the the frame and there's not any good way to adjust that now if they'd had it in the instructions um, to I don't know mount the circuit board and then push the uh, seven segment displays forward a bit before soldering them so they would sit flush that would be an improvement but as it is they're sitting a little lower and it's too late to change it and it looked really horrible uh, if the paper wasn't right down on top of the uh, seven segment LEDs it made them look very fuzzy so I did the only thing I could do at this point and I took a razor blade and cut around the periphery so that paper can sit lower and actually its adhesive backing can hold it right onto the uh, LEDs and then they look a whole lot better. I'm hoping that isn't too apparent in normal viewing. So now for the rest of it. Okay, the disc is completed. I'm going to turn it on. You can see all the buttons light up. And um, verb 16. And verb lights up. And it says I could push a key release if I want to, which I think is that. And that cancels it. So if I actually bump a key, then that releases it. So verb um, one six, and it appears up here. Enter, and then that turns off that light and the key release. And then noun, and noun lights up and key release lights up. And I'm going to put in um, thirty six. And enter and the current time is 12 14 and 40 seconds and that's what it's displaying so that's just a typical display that could be put up to make the uh, readout do something and um, <clears throat> if I want to do a playback of the we choose to go to the moon speech 
I could push the program key, which I think is really a different purpose, but on here it serves as this, and it lights up program. I think I let my electrical tape go over too far and it's blocking that partially. I'm going to have to fix that. Um, so program 60 uh, key release program 62 enter. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. Likewise, if I want to push a okay, program 6.9, Push enter. Listen, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. And finally, program seven. Oops, I double bounced it there. Key release. Program seven zero. Enter. So I have fixed the uh, problem up here. That was uh, due to a stray piece of electrical tape that uh, fell in there when I was putting in the other electrical tape. So uh, once again, I'm going to go verb, one, six, enter, noun, three, six, enter, and I get the time. Going to go pro six six nine. Listen, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Was it 35? Lights up everything. So the um, the main story here is that this is an open source product, and the company that puts this particular kit out, they say they don't write any programming. They do hardware and making the kits and the programming comes from other people. Uh, because it is Arduino-based, people could program it to do any old thing they want. And uh, some people have. There's all sorts of extensions out there on GitHub and other places to make it do more things besides the, I don't know, about a dozen or so things that this comes programmed to do, one of which is the clock, three of which are playing those three sound bites. Uh, you could do a lot more elaborate stuff with it. Um, I really just wanted it as a piece of display that would light up and do a few things. And that it does, so I'm not too inclined to um, go in and mess with the programming. However, um, you know, it's pretty good. The only really frustrating part of it I had was trying to get this bezel to fit in. Uh, these are 3D parts. They're not absolutely precise. They're really close, but this is a pressure fit. It has to snap in there. So it took me quite a lot of fiddling around with a file and sandpaper to slowly whittle off. I fit the left side in and then just take off a little bit around the corners and the side, try it again, try it again, try it again, until finally it snapped in there. 
Um, and I doubt, I mean, if you set this down hard, it would probably come off again. So uh, I talked to the uh, kit maker who was actually at a, uh, like a maker fair when I called him. And uh, he said, yeah, sometimes it's very hit and miss. You know, if you have one that just doesn't stay on and you feel confident you need to, don't need to do anything else with it, then you could put a, you know, a tiny drop of super glue in or maybe even a strip of double-sided adhesive tape behind the center part where it wouldn't show to help hold it in place. So it's not precise, it's not perfect, um, but it does pretty much what was advertised. I like the look of it. Uh, it does what I need, and even though it's a kind of expensive kit, nominally $500, I think the majority of that goes for the 3D printed case. Like they say, these case parts can take the better part of a week to print, and uh, that's got to be expensive and time consuming, and that's where I imagine the majority of the cost on this is. Uh, all these custom 3D printed parts and engraved parts, not the circuit board and the electronic components, which is maybe worth $100 or something, all told. So, definitely for NASA geeks or people who want a displayable item, I don't know if I'm going to do anything to improve this. I'm not really sure what I could do. Um, if I think of anything, I can always snap the bezel off and redo this. I'm going to be asking um, the producers of this kit if they can send me a PDF file for this overlay uh, so that maybe if I decide to do it differently you know they can uh, provide me with that and I can reprint it on different material in the future that's a possibility I'm going to attempt that anyway so I hope you like this um, oh yeah one other thing is I'm going to be asking them if they can share the schematic with me in case I ever have to diagnose any problems. I don't know if they have that prepared or not, but I will be asking. Uh, here's a quick overview of the schematics. There's only three pages, and um, although generally I'm impressed with the kit, I do have to offer both praise and criticism where I think it's appropriate. So many people doing projects, especially at the maker level, I don't know what software people are using but it's often what I would consider as a uh, professional electronic and computer designer to be just really bad, very crude and very hard to figure out, difficult to follow, violating you know many long-standing rules, if you will, of good layout. Um, you know, it's maybe technically correct, but it's not well laid out. You have a lot of incidences of lines crossing through text and just a lot of stuff I would consider to be bad. But I didn't generate these. I'm not going to criticize too harshly. Uh, anyway, you've got your Arduino Nano here. And these are only available as a, a low-res JPEG, by the way. So you get things like this where it's really hard to read some of the text. But it shows the connections to the so-called um, nanos, which are a surface mount RGB LED. And there's a bunch of them there, mostly for the alarm lamps, but also for a few status lamps. There's a read relay, which is... I'm not going to get into the reason for that, but it has to do with using or not using a logic leveler which is involved with serial communications. A lot of the modules on the this disk key, uh, besides the main circuit board, there's a number of prepackaged electronic modules, such as a micro SD uh, MP3 player, and a, a 5 volt buck converter, and a GPS module, and some other things. And by and large, the Nano is communicating with those things serially. And some of them apparently use one voltage level, like 3.3 volts, and others used 5 volts. So they have a, a logic leveler here that works on three different signals. And the read relay is also engaged in that circuit so that they can, I think, switch back and forth. And I think it also has to do with the programmability of the Nano. Um, 
they have some text in there about if you want to if the nano is plugged into the board then it's using one voltage level for serial to communicate with these other modules such as the GPS and uh, if you want to program the nano with some other programming uh, while it's plugged into the disky board then there's going to be some sort of a conflict or an issue with voltage levels so you could unplug the the nano from the disky board and reprogram it or program it and then plug it back in but if you wanted to pl uh, program it or reprogram it while it's plugged into the into the disky then you have issues and that's what this has something to do with remedying that there's also this uh, key array and you can see what they're doing here is it appears that it's being done with an analog matrix this is a common technique uh, when you're only going to be pushing one button at a time you just make a big resistor ladder and uh, have the switches tap off of it at various points so when you push one button you might get a certain voltage on a single line going to the controller if you push another button you'll get a different voltage and the controller can tell from the voltage which button has been pushed so that's different from your normal digital scanning matrix so commonly used for uh, keypads and keyboard arrays but it's not an uncommon technique so that's the uh, the status indicator GPS 5 volt buck regulator and keypad then you've got all of the seven segment LEDs and uh, I think this schematic must be either incomplete or in error um, it and it also replicates uh, things that are on the other schematic like the 5 volt buck converter and the nano uh, so that doesn't mean there's two of them it's just showing the same thing on more sheets there is one two three four uh, chips that are some sort of a driver chip uh, they may be intended for seven segment displays I'm not really sure I didn't look it up but it's a driver chip and this design uses four of them to communicate with the seven segment LEDs now it shows the uh, program and the verb and the noun readouts and it shows one bank of six digits for the uh, like the first row of data but then it doesn't show the other two rows and then it shows these two down here which don't exist as separate displays and it doesn't show the plus and minus digits which is kinda confusing and it doesn't really say anything it just says 7 seg which is what they all say so you can kinda figure out what these are from their relative positions but where are the other two rows of these they should be down here and down here and what are these and where are the pluses and minuses uh, I think they could have done a much better job on that they probably understand how it works but to me it uh, is lacking and then finally there's the extra things that are on here once again you've got the 5 volt buck converter and the nano and there's also this real-time clock and there's the IMU which is the inertial um, movement unit or something like that it's a six axis uh, inertial device so the uh, the unit can tell what its motion is uh, and that's all well and good but there's also other stuff on this design such as the uh, the SD card uh, mp3 player which is not depicted so I regard these schematics here uh, as being pretty iffy and certainly incomplete and confusing now I contacted the makers of the kit and asked them where can I get some good schematics and I was redirected back to these three so if they have anything better they're not forthcoming Anyway, so that's my brief overview of the schematics such as they are.